All right. So the funny thing is, I've been actually standing here for 30 minutes trying to figure out how I was going to start this episode. And not only that, it's going to be unscripted. So if you want to hear more, stay listening. Right, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of True Say with CBJ, and I am your host, Cherno. Now, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been listening to the podcast, to my 87 fans who are tuning in every episode and listening, even though sometimes it's not very consistent. I really appreciate you. Like, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot. So as you can see, this is another solo episode. Now, I did not have any plans or expect that I was going to be doing these anymore because they're just too, they're just too weird for me. But, but here we are. And I wanted to just do this episode as a bonus episode and I guess if you're going to be listening to this by January 1st or sometimes in 2024, I will just say Happy New Year and may God bless us all. May God accept all our du'as and coming into this new year, may God bless us to be able to have more, you know, to work more, to be able to, I don't know, man, just have you know, more health, more like more wealth and just more better news, you know, on everything that's been happening in 2023. So as you guys know, I've been doing this now for one year and damn, I can't believe it's actually been a year of doing this podcast. And I just want to do a recap of everything that's been happening and for all the episodes that I posted with the, like, you know, the podcast and just overall, even just me, how has it been for me in 2023? How, how has everything been, you know, with my personal life also? So this is kind of like a therapy session, but it's a bit weird. So, and cause it's just me right now, it's about 10 PM in the night and I'm sitting in my kitchen, which is my office. And by the way, for people who are actually listening to the podcast, now I'm new to this because if you're watching on YouTube, you can see me and I can see you. So as you can see, your boy is stepping up, trying to do video podcasting now, but we're going to, we're going to get into that one later. And so if you're listening, I apologize because I'm still new to this game on how this works, because I know some people are going to be listening and some people are going to be watching. So if I'm saying something or doing something and I'm not maybe explaining it very clear for you who is listening, I apologize. If you want to see it, just head over to my YouTube and you're going to see your boy sitting here. So I think I already talked about thanking my 87 fans who have been listening to every episode. I think I've already talked about that. Now, I did mention that this is going to be unscripted. And that's like, that's bad for me. You know, that is like getting into a new territory of just doing something that I normally would never do. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast, you would know that I've done couple of um, solo episodes where, you know, it was audio, but it was actually scripted. But the thing is with the scripted, it's hard to stay consistent with them. And I just feel like it was just not me. It just didn't feel very authentic. It felt like I was preparing too much, you know, because I'm such an overthinker and I would probably like to talk about overthinking later. And You know, it's just, I try to control my brain when I am doing these things. As like right now, there are so many things. I'm looking at my screen. I do have some bullet points and some points that I would like to talk about. Like, but overall, my brain is just firing with like so much information. Like everything I'm seeing, like right now I'm looking at a microwave and I'm thinking about something, some pizza I'm going to be heating up later. Like that's, that's how much my brain is moving and it's so hard to control it. 
but with the uns- with the scripted, it's like because I have to always write all like almost like five to six thousand words. You know, even though they are my own words, they are actually my own thoughts and everything. I sit and write them down, and I just realized that I just didn't have the time to do that anymore, and I was not going to be able to be consistent with them, and it was somehow a little bit stressful. But overall, when I was doing them, it was actually very nice because, oh, I'm actually starting to get a little bit relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, see, I'm starting to forget what I was about to say because new information just came into my mind. But yeah, I was going to say it actually was a little bit nice because when I was writing them also, it felt like some sort of a therapy to me when I was doing these scripted episodes because I could sit down and think and then write, you know, I've always wanted to be a writer. I've always wanted to write things because I'm, I'm into like filmmaking and acting and everything. So I always thought about like writing my own scripts and everything. And I've always had the fear of doing it. So at that point when I was doing it, it was actually really cool. It was just with the podcast, I felt like it was just taking a lot of my time, but I'm sure I'll be doing some writing some other time, you know, you know, I've been thinking about doing that a lot, like even writing my own journal or writing a diary, you know, just, you know, just writing a, something just to track my life because I feel like just like my brain is everywhere. I can never like stick to one thing. There's always this and this and this and this and that. I don't know whether I have ADHD or whatever I'm diagnosed, but this has been happening to me since I've come to Sweden. But I guess this year, I've learned that all this year, like this 2023 has been a learning point in my life. And I don't know how has it been for you guys, but for me, it's just been getting to know more about myself. And I guess that just gets into the topic of why I even started this podcast. Ooh, you see what your boy just did there? I'm following my notes, okay? I'm following my my bullet points very well. Let's see. Let's see how it, this is gonna end, okay? It's probably gonna be end. It's, gonna, it's probably gonna end me just ranting about aliens and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, so it gets into the point of just like me trying to know why I'm doing this podcast, why I started it. Now I've done an episode where I talked about I was, you know, I'm starting this podcast because I wanted to be a better speaker, a better listener. And yeah, that's true. But I think through time that has changed. It has changed a lot. And trust me, it's changing almost every single day. It's just me asking myself why I'm doing this. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Because I think in everything that you do in your life, whether it's business, whether it's like modeling, what, like whatever, whatever that you're doing, your job, whatever, you always have to ask yourself why you're doing it. Because if you don't know why you're doing it, you're going to get stuck and you're not going to go anywhere. Like you're never going to reach to your end goal or you're just going to suffer like somehow. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, I think through time I've kind of noticed this is, has starting to become more of a therapy session because throughout my journey in life, as I grow more, I really try to understand why am I, you know, the way I am sometimes. Why do I think why do I overthink a lot sometimes? Why certain things I want to do in my life, I can't do it. You know, like even though my life is not that difficult, it wasn't that hard growing up and everything. Yeah, I had some moments, but, you know, so talking to other people and bringing them into my podcast, it was, it's me just trying to understand everyone's journey, their struggles starting from their childhood to understand like how they have overcome certain things, how they've managed to deal with certain things, how they've able to block certain noises to reach where they want to reach. So it's never even only about even actually just, um, um, just interviewing people who are like, who are already successful, but even people who are not even successful, just, just on a day to day, like it can be like any human being, like, cause every person has their own story doesn't matter you need a you don't have you have a phd or you don't have a phd or whatever it's just like it could be you it could be you right now actually listening to me i could be talking to you because i feel like you have a story right and i'm sure if it's something that you haven't got over in life or whatever like or you're figuring out why like i'm i'm just trying to understand another person's perspective of how they've maneuvered through life. And maybe I can put it and implement it with mine. And then maybe I can use that and get to where I want to get. 
So it's actually all about me just trying to get as much knowledge po- as possibly as I can. So, because I think knowledge is just so important. Like I love to learn. I love to read about things. I like, I, I, I'm learning about everything, you know, like if you, if like, I just enjoy having conversation where a person is even telling me something that they've never, I've never talked, I've never heard before, whether it's history, where it's like geography, whether it's maths, actually, no, I don't like maths. Like I know I'm a fuller and we love money, but if I can count one, two, three, four millions, that's enough for me. I know the basic calculating of how much salary I'm getting by the end of the month. Apart from that, anything else, I don't know. So, but anything else I love talking about. And the funny thing is actually, I, w- I was supposed to have, I'm supposed to do a podcast with somebody, I can't really say their name, but they actually called me today and we were talking and they were talking about certain investments and loans and stuff. And I was listening to them. But a part of me was like, I have no clue what this person is saying when it comes to money, because I'm just terrible with money. I'm terrible with investing money and all this. I'm bad at it. You know, I'm bad at it. If you Don't even try to figure out how I'm saving my money. Okay. I'm, I'm learning how to invest in Bitcoin. It's, it's not going well so far. I actually made a withdrawal already. <laughs> but yeah, but as you can see, this is very unscripted. So I'm spiraling around everywhere. But, you know, the main focus basically it's just me learning about individuals journey and it becoming more of a therapy like session to just kind of understand myself and and know and so so i can just learn something from the person that i'm talking to now every episode of course like has been kind of different like and i feel like i didn't get that from every person that i talked to you know there's some episode which i will talk about later which i actually felt that I was actually getting what I needed from this person. You know what I mean? Or this is the way I want my podcast to be. But at the same time, it's like, I'm just going, like, I'm just going with the flow. You know, I'm just going with the flow. Anybody that I enjoy talking to, anybody that I feel like they're very interesting, you know, and I just want to learn a lot of, like a lot from them. I'm just, I'm just all in and I just want to have them on my podcast and I just want to talk. So through times, like, that has changed the speaking and the learning thing phase that has changed i think that's still part of it i'm still learning how to be because even right now this what i'm doing is something new to me like this is part of me just overcoming some of the fears that i have which is sitting in front of the camera talking i think it's like a gambian thing because once the mic is on and the camera is on it's like it's just i don't know it's just something weird about it it just feels so unnatural Even though I tend to talk to myself all the time, like when I'm alone, I can talk to myself. I, if I have to say something to someone, sometimes I I actually like practice it sometimes, like how I'm going to say it, you know, you know, it sometimes feel like I'm almost acting. It feels like almost my life becomes this method acting role. Like everything has to be, you know, some sort of a script, you know, which is, which gets annoying sometimes, you know, but, um, but yeah. So I think that's, kind of why I started the podcast, you know, like, yeah, like, so why I started the podcast have changed to over time to like why I'm doing it now to kind of overall understand other people's journey so that I can implement it in mine, you know? So I think that's a very cool thing and I'm, and I'm truly, truly enjoying it so far. Now, the timing of the podcast now like I said, it's been a year of doing this podcast and I've posted now 25 episodes. I think this is going to be the 26th episode, which is going to be like a bonus episode for the end of the year. Now, I'm, I'm honestly very grateful how it has been going. You know, when I really think about it, my first initial plan with this podcast was to actually start with 25 episodes before I even post anything. Now, obviously that did not go as planned. I ended up posting three episodes and then I even like kind of didn't post anything for like a while, I think. And that's because my timing was just off. That was like literally a month before my daughter was born. And I feel like it was just insane because I I feel like at that time when I was posting those episodes, like I just didn't fully grasp that I was about to be a father. Maybe there was some sort of a, 
um, like I was a bit scared, maybe I was a bit nervous or I was just going through something at that time. Like, like I didn't think this was real. Like she was actually going to be here, you know, in a way. So I was just kind of just focused doing what I was doing. I was just distracting myself. I was learning how to podcast. I was just so busy, just focus, focus, focus. I was almost like rushing, like before she get here, that something has to start before this child gets here. I don't know. And when I dropped those three episodes, you know, they were amazing. They were, you know, they were good. You know, like there was a lot of chat and talk. Now to keep it consistent, that was kind of like where the question marks comes. Now, how can I actually keep doing this? Because honestly, like when I just start, I know I talked about why I started the podcast and the reason why, but when I start, honestly, honestly, I actually didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that I like talking to people and it just feel good. But through time, as time goes, I started to figure out like why I'm doing this, you know? So I think it's very important to actually know why you're doing what you're doing. I actually recently just read a book from this writer called, I think Simon Sinek, he's a very famous influencer or he's a writer and like this relationship, I don't know, something he is. I don't know, if you guys Google him, you will find him, Simon Sinek. He just wrote a book, I think it's called Start With Why. Now I can't really, I read the book only once, so I don't really memorize everything that he said, but it was just basically just, when you're doing something in life, whether it's business or whatever it is, there's only three things. It's the how and the what and the why. So you know what you're doing and you know how to do it. And the last one, which is why. Now, why are you doing it? And most of the time people get stuck with why are you doing? And I actually got stuck with why I was doing it. I remember a couple of months ago, this book was actually recommended to me by a friend, Musa Njai Jufure, who is doing amazing work for our country, for Africa, with his Jufure t-shirts. Make sure you check them out. And yeah, this podcast is not sponsored by Jufure. But hey, Musa, if, if you want to do that, just just let me know. You know, you're my boy. <laughs> but, you know, he told me we have this long conversation. You know, I almost I enjoy having conversation with him. You know, I did episodes with him, but it was not really like even the kind of conversation that I was really wanted to have. Like me and him, we have deeper conversation and I'm definitely going to bring him back to the podcast especially with a video format is going to be amazing with him. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a nice setup and we're going to really get into it like a deep, deep conversation because me and him, when we talk, we are very honest with each other. We, we talk about what we're doing. We criticize each other on the things that we're not good at or, you know, like, we, you know, we talk, you know, like almost like he's mentoring me in a way. And he told me like why I'm doing this podcast. And I couldn't really give him a very good answer of why I'm doing this podcast. And that just kind of made me just stop because I was like, I was always focused on, on like how to do it and what to do, how to do it and what to do, you know, like, as in like who I'm going to get next on the podcast. I was not really thinking a lot about why am I even doing this? I never really sat down and just really think about. It. So even with your business also, whatever you're doing, if you feel like this, you're not doing very well or you feel like so stressed, just think about why you're doing it. Then it becomes, I think it becomes fun. It becomes enjoyable and it can take time. Like I'm one year into this, but I'm still learning my why. I'm still learning my why. And I'm sure as time goes by, I'm still going to be figuring that out, you know? And also it actually just feels good with the podcast when people, there are people who have been messaging me. I know I talked about my 87 fans in the beginning, but they've been like, you know, there's some people who text me like private message and literally just tell me like what my podcast is doing for them. And so when I see those things that already, that also gives me a why that, wow, like I'm actually looking at my podcast sometimes because I'm not going to lie. Like sometimes I look at the podcast, I'm like, would I watch it? You know, like, would I watch my own content? Like, if I was not me, would I be sitting down, taking my time watching? So that's why, like, every episode that I post, I really try to make it the best quality that I possibly can or try to have convers best conversation that I could have. And then I'm, like, I'm I'm a very, crit like, I, I'm very self-critical most of the time. So, which is a bad thing sometimes as I, as I'm learning that now, 
that I need to give myself more credit on the things that I do. But I tend to like criticize a lot of the episodes that I even do myself, not because of the person I'm inviting. I always take the responsibility for myself that, oh, I could do it better. I could handle it better. You know, obviously there's a lot of the difficulties that I go through with the podcast, but I'll mention that. I'll talk about that later because there's someone who have some wrote some questions for me to answer and I'll answer them later. But, you know, like as I was saying with the consistency, you know, you know, because, you know, when you understand your why, you know, then you're going to you want to keep going, you know, no matter how difficult it is. So when my child was born, <laughs> see, I did not forget that I was talking about my daughter. Yeah, it kind of feels good to actually feel like so far I'm kind of getting hold of this. I hope you're, 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 you're still listening, you know, appreciate you like so far. I don't even know how many minutes we're in. I'm actually recording with my iPhone, so I can't see shit. If this is recording, fine. If it's not recording, I'm not doing this again, but, um, nah, seriously. So when my child was born, obviously I took a little bit of a break after those three episodes because, you know, I had to be there with my wife and help you know, around, not help around, but just even be there because it's my responsibility also. I wouldn't really call it help. Do my duties as a father, you know, and so there was a lot of stress like, okay, how am I going to do this now, right? How, How can I keep going with having a daughter, having a nine to five, you know, and, you know, like just so many other things. You feel like living in Sweden, you just don't have time for anything at all you know, and I want to go to gym. So, which means how, what am I prioritizing now? And obviously like I'm a family person, you know, I love spending time with my wife. I love spending time with my daughter, family. I love being around my family. Like if you know me, I'm very close with my sisters. I'm very close with my mom. Like I'm very close with my family members. And so how can I do that and stay with my family, but also try to really follow the things I want to do? And I'm really going to, this is kind of an emotional thing, but even my acting, I kind of have to feel like I'm giving it up because in a way it, I just can't do everything. You know, when I post these um, short audition tapes that I do on Instagram, I see like all the hype. Some people are telling me even stop the podcast, do the acting. And I'm like, you know, like, cause acting is my first love is the first one of the first thing. Now, I wouldn't say the first thing. Quran is my first thing. Okay. Acting is second because Allah comes first with anything. So, and, but apart from that, acting is kind of the thing that I love to do. I love to create. I love to act. I love to visualize things that I want to do. And now I'm actually trying to get into that more, but not acting, not being in front of the camera, but more like being behind the camera more because I actually want to tell stories that I have in my mind. But anyway, so um, so there was a lot of thinking of like, how am I going to do all of these things? How am I going to manage all these things and still be able to be sane, you know? And Alhamdulillah, with God's help, you know, I remember when Ramadan was actually coming through, I was really praying so hard to tell God to really bless this podcast because I don't want to lose this podcast no matter what. I had like six du'as that I wrote and one of them was actually this podcast being more blessed and keep going more. And somehow every time, because trust me, there's been a lot of fucks and a lot of shits and a lot of, I can't do this anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. My wife get to hear all these things when I'm sitting in the kitchen. Even now she's actually sitting in the living room because I was like, I think I'm going to probably record for 10 minutes and I'm going to come back and I'm like, fuck, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. But I'll talk about that also later on why. Now, you know, I think with God really helped me to stay, to keep consistent because sometimes like, I feel like I'm not even into it. You know, I'm not even motivated to do it. So that takes a lot of discipline just to keep going, to keep pushing. Whenever I see a time where a difficult time, a hard time, when I'm about to fail or when I'm failing or when I can learn how to do something or when I feel like, okay, now it's hard because I have to work and I have to go home and I have to hold my child. And I, then I'm like, 
I'm going to just spend extra hours or extra, extra hour to do it. Whether I'm doing my research of the podcast in the bus or whether I'm doing it when I have a bathroom break or when I have a break or when I have to skip a meal to do like whatever it is, it's just been a constant fight just to keep, make sure that the consistency, because without consistency, you can't go anywhere. I think a couple of, um, um, my, my last episode, with the one I had with Nafisatu, I talked about that, that this this one um, quote that actually Denzel Washington have, and I think, I don't memorize it, but I actually have it right in front of me. It says, dreams without goals are just dreams. And ultimately, they feel disappointment. On the road to achieving your dreams, you must apply discipline, but more importantly, consistency. Because without commitment, you will never start. But without consistency, you will never finish. So I think consistency is very, very important, you know, to with anything that you're doing, because sometimes you're not really motivated to do anything. So I think the consistency comes with that discipline, right? You have to have the discipline to start, you know, with the commit, like committing to do it. And then you keep going, you keep that consistency, you keep going. And I hope what I'm saying makes sense to you, but you just have to keep going, no matter how bad it is, just keep going because through time I've really learned more about myself this year, like who I am as a person, how I deal with stress, how I deal with failure, you know, and somehow I almost enjoy being in a hard time, you know, like when, when I see that I can't figure something out, when I feel like I'm on my toughest time, when I feel like maybe even in the house, there's certain stress, that's when I'm like, get up and do it. You know, just get up and do it. Don't stop. You know, almost like when everything is good and chill, I start to become too slow. Like I don't even want to do stuff anymore because I don't feel pressure. But that pressure comes when I'm actually in a tough time. So, you know, also one of the things that I've been, reason why I've been able to do to keep like with the consistency is because I started with audio podcasting. Because when I was starting this ep- podcast, I decided I was going to do audio first because I wanted to learn the basics of podcasting because that's how podcasting started. It's just nowadays where we get all this video podcasting and all the reels, and the TikToks. And so I'm kind of an old school still. Like I'm st- I wanted to actually learn the basics on how to do this. So I've actually went to the trenches of audio podcasting one-on-one, which is having audio problems. And if you guys listen to my first episode, you guys will see how this, the sound quality was. I did one with Musa and the sound was just terrible. And I was so pissed and I was like, what am I even doing? And I remember too, also everybody telling me like, no, 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 Cherno, you need to, you need to do the video. Everybody need to see you. And for me, it was never about me, people seeing me. You know, I was never doing this for people. This was all about me. I didn't care about who's, if people are going to watch or not going to watch. And I do appreciate everybody that's watching. But I didn't want to kind of sell myself into this media, into this internet thing where whatever I, like I have to just please people. You know, I wanted to make sure that I'm doing this on my own way, in my own terms. If somebody watch, fine. If you're not watching, you know, go watch something else. You know what I mean? And that's just me being honest. Like even still now, sometimes someone will come be like, you have to do it this way. Then people like, I took my time. As you can see, obviously, th- this is kind of just leading me, trying to put myself out there more because that's also me. Like earlier I talked about just overcoming certain fears I have. Yes, I think it is part of like the fears that I have, like the fear of, people actually accepting me for who I am or how I am, the way I talk and all these things. And I think we're we're all like that. You know, we all have that fear of, you know, how people are going to, you know, take us or how people are going to see us. We do, you know, that's why we want to be our best self and talk our best self and, and have, have all these things. And I've always kind of been under hiding in a way. But still, I just wanted to actually do learn how to do podcasting one on one. Like I wanted to learn from the from the beginning slowly, slowly. So as I'm doing this now, like I've mastered how to do the audio. You know what I mean? I know how to do it. It's pretty easy. It's pretty fast. And 
And I'm like, okay, now that I know this, it's time to move on. It's time to move on from this. But of course, when you're doing something, you don't want to just keep doing that for forever. Like I didn't want to be after one year now, you don't expect me to keep doing like audio podcasting till 20, till 2025, you know, like it's time to move on to do something else. As you can see, I'm sitting in my kitchen, but maybe by next year, you're going to be seeing me in a proper studio. And then next thing you know, I'm going to be having guests right next to me with me sitting face to face because that's really what I prefer more, you know, and, and I'll get into that more also later. But, you know, overall, just try to put myself out there so that people can see the real me, you know, because when you listen to someone, I think audio is important and it's very good. But when you see the person, you see now how everything I am, my gestures and how I talk and how I move it, my behavior. And it feel it does feel strange a little bit. You know, I did my proper video episode when I did the first one with G. And my camera failed in the first two minutes. So that was, that was already, I think I mentioned on that episode, it was just a disaster. But the video was bad, it was terrible, but look how much noise it made in Gambia. Like that was my best episode so far. And you know, like I was looking at it like, oh my God, this is terrible. My first video and look like this, nobody's gonna watch it. But it didn't matter what people see. What people were hearing, what he was saying, and what we were saying was more important. So the audio is very important. So after you master the audio, the video now is just kind of just an extent of just, you know, people seeing you because people just like to see people, I guess, right? People just want to look at you. People just like to watch things and have the subtitles popping off. And it's, you know, that's, that's kind of the generation now that we're living, you know, we're not living in a radio time anymore where you have to sit next to your grandma and just put the radio on to be listening. You know, we're not, we're not in that, in that thing anymore, you know? So I think, you know, that is kind of, you know, why, like I said, putting myself out there, learning new things, you know, trying to grow myself, trying to grow the podcast, obviously. And, and I did say like, you know, I don't really care if people watch or not. I mean, of course I do care. You know, if I was doing this and nobody's listening at all, it means that I'm definitely doing something wrong. But so I do want people to do come in and listen because, you know, one of the things is, is like, you know, I, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about finding a purpose and all that. I wasn't really paying attention to how much, but, but it was just something about just, I want to be like part of transforming the world. I don't want to be trans like the I don't want to be transformed. You know what I mean? I want to be transforming the world. I don't want to be transformed. I want to be part of what's moving the world forward, what's help changing the world, or into making some sort of an impact in the world. You know what I mean? I want to be part of that and I want to be in control of that. So doing this podcast, you know, having all these voices and all these stories and people coming in and telling me about their personal life and all these things. It's, you know, someone else is listening to it and they're actually relating it to it. And somehow they can take something out in it or and use it in their daily life and it can actually have an impact in their life. So I think that is one of the most important things. So, um, yeah, so I think that's that's a very important thing, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna guess, I guess we keep listening, you know, I feel like I'm gonna get stuck soon. I don't know what else to talk about, but yeah, I. I want to talk about actually something that actually happened also this year, which was, I don't know whether to call it a burnout or whether to call it an anxiety attack, right? Because as I said, it's, it's been an insane year, you know, running the podcast, having a family, trying to act, just trying to figure out what I want to do with life overall. You know, this, this year has been that. Because I feel like when you become a father, you know, when you become a parent, you know, well, I will actually talk as a man, as a father, you start to just automatically try to figure out how am I going to make sure that this child have a better life. And also when you reach 30, this is it. There's no more joke. There's no more play. It's time to figure it out because now you feel like, okay, I got 10 more years, but 
Because when I'm 40 and I don't figure it out, I'm I'm fucked. Sorry for my language, but it's that's kind of how it is. Because your 20s, you're just you're just having fun. You know, you just you don't really be you really thinking about what you want to do in your life, and you shouldn't. Like I wasn't really thinking about what I wanted to do in my life. You know, but by the time you're starting to get out of it, your 20s, 27, 28, then you slowly start to shift. You know, that's the same time as fun to shift. And by 30, now you're like, all right, this is it. You either figure it out by 30, some most like some people in this generation now, some people do make it by 30, be very successful. But it takes a lot of sacrifice also. You, most of those people don't really have a lot of fun. You know, and in, don't really experience life in a certain way. I'm sure some do, but the majority I'm talking about. Because in your 20s, you're just supposed to be figuring out life. You're still young. But at 30, I'm 31 now, and I'm new into my 30s, but I just have this this focus, this like so much tunnel vision that I just, I just need to get, I just need to make it, you know? And I don't know. So that's kind of how I've just been feeling so far this year. That's why I've been running around, I'm working, you know, and you're working to survive, you know, you're not really working, making the type of income where you're like, you know, you could quit your job or whatever, like, you, you know, you're kind of working to survive because it's a nine to five. Like, I, I didn't go to school, so I'm not educated. So coming to Sweden, I'm, I, I work as a, as a demolition man. That's what I do. I destroy shit every single day. And it takes a lot of damage to my body, right? I get tired a lot. You know, I come home, my back hurts, my hand hurts. My hands are actually gone. Like my nerves are dead. I've been to the, I went to see like a third, like a physio therapist a couple of times. I almost gave up because I was like, they can't fix it. The only thing I can fix it is just to stop working there. When you start working there, you know, this, 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 this economy right now, and it's for me exactly who have you really, I'm still studying, but I haven't really got to a certain level where I can go and actually chase a degree. Like, what, what are you going to do? You know, where are you going to go? You know, so you have to stick to a job that you're kind of good at in a way. Like, I mean, I'm good at a lot of other things, but there's other things that come to it when you're like, for me, living in Sweden, because you have the, the language barrier, you know, like some job phone take if you don't speak very, very full Swedish. My Swedish is good, but still, you know, I'm not that fluent. So there's a lot of things that come to it, and there's a lot of stress that comes to it, and you're just really trying to figure out, Am I supposed to be here? You know, like, I don't want to be here. But also, you know, where am I going to go? Trying to run a podcast. You want to act. The acting, they won't take you because you don't speak fluent Swedish. So, like, you're like, what am I going to do? So, it's, it's like a question that I keep asking myself all the time. You know? What am I going to be doing? I'm waking up every single day, going to work, coming. Yes, I'm living to survive because that's my duty as a Muslim man. I'm also supposed to work because it's part of worshiping to actually be working, you know? And so with all those things, I think I got to a point where I just had an anxiety attack. I think I will call it an anxiety attack. I think I've kind of accepted it now that it was actually that because it was insane. So it was one day, me and my wife and my daughter we were heading out. And for people who were listening, they didn't know, but not they didn't know when it actually happened. So we were heading to some Jamaican party thing. I think it was Jamaican Independence Day or something. And they were having a party here in Sweden. So we were heading there and we were in the elevator in the train station. This is like in the TSN Trollen, the, the big station in Stockholm. And all of a sudden, we were just getting out of the elevator. Like, I wasn't really stressed. I was kind of really calm. And most of the times, I actually, I am, you know. But all of a sudden, I just felt like silence. And just my brain just went silence. And it felt like I was dizzy. And I was about to puke. It felt like the earth was just shaking or something. Like, I can't really explain it very well. But I just lost it, just lost it. 
I wasn't embarrassed at all because I couldn't really control it. And I was just sitting in the floor there, literally smashing my head, telling myself, get the fuck out of my head. Because that's the only thing I can tell her. Like, this is not the time to be having an attack. Or whatever the hell this is. I don't understand why am I feeling like this? <laughs> you know, like this year when I'm like, I'm doing things, things are gonna happen. And all of a sudden, I freaking and so you to get attacked, seriously? And I know a lot of people go through this. No, I'm not expert in this. This was my first time. This was my experience. And I know it was very scary because I thought I was going to die. But at the same time, I wasn't really scared. There was this kind of moment of, this is it. I'm going. But the other part was like, you're not going to leave your daughter here and your wife. What are you going to do? So get up. So get the hell up. Stand up. But I couldn't. I couldn't stand up. My wife was just confused. She went to like, she maybe thought maybe we thought maybe it was like my sugar or something. I don't. I never really had problem with that. I do. I think have a low like like high blood pressure sometimes when I'm very stressed. But but that was just something else. Now this didn't stop. And this didn't stop there. Like I felt a little bit better. Drank some water, and my wife brought me some Kent's chocolate. <laughs> uh my god this is actually very really funny yeah but this is this is crazy it's actually a bit emotional when i'm talking about it as i said this is some guy this is this is kind of a therapy game. but after that i i'm actually gonna check if this episode is actually a recording because this is awesome as fuck hold on all right i am back you wouldn't believe it, but this guy right here wasn't recording. <laughs> so my storage was full. So I had to delete some stuff on my phone. I guess this is just one of the things about podcasting, right? Video podcasting. Anyway, I don't think I have a lot left, but um, I think I was being a bit emotional talking about my anxiety attack right so now this was not the first one that happened right i guess that was that's when i figured that it was maybe an anxiety attack you know and i talked to my wife about it and she was like it's an anxiety attack you know we didn't want to really say it but i guess it was just me denying that i'm actually having this now i want to just talk about the second one and the second one was very interesting and I'm sure people are going to be like, am I okay? I'm okay. You know, one thing with me, Alhamdulillah, that no matter what, there's a verse in the Quran that says, Inna Allah ma'ana. God, God is with us. So God is always with me, no matter what I'm going through. So the second one was more, I think it was more tough. I think it was the second or the third I can't really remember, but it was a tough, it was a hard one because it, this happened four times. Like these attacks happened four times. And when it happened the other time, which was the worst one, it really got me sitting on the floor because my daughter was there. And then I was experiencing this and it was really, really scary. Because I, then I really start to hit myself. I start to hit, hit myself in the head. My wife was really scared. And, and I will say the reason why I was doing that, is I think, I think it might have been the second one. Because that, that time I was really denying that this is actually happening to me. Why is this happening to me? What have I done to deserve this? You know, like I've been through the depression. I've been through the, the getting sober and all these things. Like I've done it all by myself. Why am I going through this? Now, there was a lot of, now, yeah, let me just talk about why I was hitting myself. I guess, I think I was just kind of calling myself 
I'll use the word bitch, being a bitch. You know, we all have the bitch inside of us. And once in a while, it comes out. I keep it in. I have been keeping her in. Or him. It could be a him too. <laughs> you know, making sure that that bitch inside of us don't come out. We all have that. You know, and in my mind, it was a, it's just me. It's just my body just being a bitch. You know, and I know I'm using that word a lot for people who are listening who have certain expectations of who I am. I do say the word. I apologize. I might say it again. I don't know. But the point is, it's like, it was just me and it's not accepting that I have that side at all. And I just kind of realized that we all have that vulnerable side. We're not, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm breakable. You know, I can be broken. I can be damaged. Same as a car and everything else that can be, like, that can break. And at that point, I actually broke. But it was just hard for me to take in and hard for me to understand that this was actually happening in my life. And now I'm just having even an anxiety of my phone storage for getting full again. So I'm probably going to be rushing through this episode, but I'll try to be as clear as I possibly can. And guys, if you are still listening and you're still sticking with me to this episode, I really appreciate you. Thank you. Now, I think so at that point, I was just like, why is this happening to me? Get out of my mind. Get out of my body. This is not the time for it. This is this is the words that I was actually using, telling myself that this needs to get out. But what I realized about anxiety, which is actually a very scary thing, that the more you deny it, the more it comes. So you kind of have to accept it. And I think on my third one, I kind of start to accept it. And in the fourth one, I've just be like, okay, here, here, here you are again. But my plan was just figuring out how can I stop this? And of course, I got rid of them. Now, I don't know exactly how I get rid of them, but I know exactly. Like I went to the gym and I did 100 burpees. I actually worked out that day like I've never worked out before. I think when I was doing that episode, I had, was just about to talk to Dr. Ismail Abaji. I was talking to TJ Ansala. I think it was around that episode. And I went to do 100 burpees. I did a tough workout and I got whatever negativity, whatever bitch that was inside of me, it got out. Focus mode on. Don't come at me. This is not the time. I don't have time for it. Now, I know I'm not advising people to do this if you're having an anxiety attack. And the way I dealt with mine and the way you deal with yours can be different. You might need help. Like you might need to actually go see someone or talk to someone. Luckily, my wife was around with me, so I could talk to her. We are very open with each other. We talk to each other. I talk to my family about it. But I kind of just realized it's just something that you have to deal with on your own. You know, there are certain things it's just mentally, right? There's a, just, uh, there's a lot of fear of just, you know, talking about certain things and Oh, then the anxiety kind of, I think the, the reason was, I feel like I didn't want to be here anymore. And I think I talked about, you know, just figuring out what I wanted to do right in, in my life in Sweden. I think I was talking about that because when the video stopped, I don't really remember what I was talking about, but I think it was that. And it was just me figuring out what I want to do. And I think the anxiety came with all of that. You know, do I want to be here? How can I go about my life with this? How can I give my child the best life? How, 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 how? What, you know, like, how can I do everything? I just kind of put all that pressure on me. But I felt like, you know, I just couldn't go on anymore. I just broke. It's like an engine. You, if you push it too much, it's going to fail. You're going to have an engine light on. You know, it's like when you have headaches during the day, sometimes these migraines, they are just engine lights that are on in your body. And it's just telling you that something is off. Either you're not getting enough sleep, which I was not. I was getting four or five hours of sleep a day, but that's okay with me. Like I actually function okay with that, I think. Because when I get eight hours, then I'm just, I don't want to get out of the house. I'm just overly tired and I'm just 
feeling depressed or almost. But anyway, so I think the anxiety comes with this. So if you're actually going through your own anxiety, I think you need to really look at your life like there are just questions that you're either afraid to, to ask. There's just something that you're afraid to actually just face, you know, and it could be anything. It could be anyone. So face it. I think the, the time you face it and there were certain things I wanted to talk about, for example, with like even my wife and my, like my family, whatever, I had to just get it out. I had to just say the things I need to say. Don't keep it in because the more you keep it in and you have other things that are involved, you're just going to go, you're just going to break. Boom. So, you know, and I think this is a serious thing. I didn't even believe that these things exist. I didn't believe the anxiety attack. I know that I went through depression and depression, it was real. But this anxiety attack, it's just weird. It's just weird. And I called it a bitch. It's like the bitch in me just coming out. <laughs> and what I did, went to the gym, did 100 burpees, figured out certain things on why and how. And I just bring it into the pl plate and just discuss it and talk about it, figure it out and move on. But it's always little crumbs in your mind. You're always just afraid that it might come back. But you just try not to focus about it, you know. So I think through the, like, because of all those things that I went through, this is actually making me want to keep going with this podcast, with everything else that I'm doing. Because I'm like, I've never been through this. Like what I've been through this year, I've never, I've never been through that before. I've been in the happiest in my life, but I've been the lowest in my life. So because of that, it just means that somehow I'm just heading to the right direction. You know, even though like when I was starting the podcast, I was like, I'm going to drive 25 episodes and then I'm going to post them each week so that I'll already have 25. But I got 25 by, this, by the end of the year. And I'm grateful for it. Trust me, like you need to really look at your life like, where were you last year like and compared to now like what have you done have you did, did you do better are you doing better did you do more than you done last year then it's okay then it's totally okay and that's what i just start to realize i've always just been so hard on myself but like oh come on 25 episodes like ah oh, yeah it's all right no it's it's great it's great and here i am with a bonus episode and I didn't actually expect this to be turning out this way. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying myself talking. But I don't want to be talking too much. And then my phone is going to be full again. And I don't even know why it's full so fast. Like I had a lot of memory left. But, you know, so you like just kind of look at your life like, well, let's look at this year or any anything you're doing. Just be like, have you improved? So I think for me... Um, the point is, it's like, it's kind of like, um, like I'm just grateful, just having gratitude and not complain because I think I've said before in past episodes, you know, with Allah, the more you're grateful, the more he gives you things to be grateful for, but the more you complain, the more he just gives you things to be complaining about. So we have to be so much, so grateful. Like sometimes I'm worried about certain things and I just actually look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I'm breathing. Alhamdulillah. But not only even by saying it, but just looking at yourself, be like, wow, I have this. There are some people who are not walking. There are some people who don't have certain things. So just being grateful overall, because no matter what, like you're alive, you're living. You're eating, you're okay, you're talking, you can see, you know, there are certain things we are actually not thankful enough, like even just literally having eyelashes. I think about those things. I'm actually grateful for having eyelashes. Some people probably don't even have eyelashes, <laughs> you know, like, so I don't want to be sitting thinking about, oh, I didn't do well enough this year. I, I could have done better. Yeah. I mean, we could always done better, but it's already gone now. So the thing is, by starting the year or the end of the year, right right now, as I'm recording this podcast, it's still December. So but you might be listening to this in January, 
But I hope you already started your journey through 2024 because I already started and this is it. It's already planned. So make sure whatever you're going to do, you have only a couple of weeks left. You have a couple of days left. So just start it now. Just do it now. It's never too late. Don't sit around overthinking about if you can do it or if you can't do it. This time you're thinking about spending it, because I go through this. And before I end this, I'm just going to kind of talk about it, which is overthinking, because I think in the beginning of the video, I talk about overthinking. It's the worst thing. You know, we do like procrastinate, and I hope I'm saying that word right. But there's just something about overthinking, and that's my problem. And it's like, it's just the worst thing. And you know, we only overthink about negative things, right? The only things that we can do. Because when everything is going right, we don't overthink. You know, it's like when you're designing something or when you're building something or when you're thinking about going into a new territory that you don't know and you're just overthinking to like everything that's going to happen, every pers possible scenario. You're only thinking about the negative thing, like aspect of it. I don't know. Is You don't think about, you don't overthink when you're in a positive area, in a positive pool. You don't overthink about things. It's just, it is, you know, but when you're scared and worried about certain things, you just start to overthink and it's just negative and negative and negative. And that's what I learned. You know, that's what I learned about myself also this year to how I'm such an overthinker and I'm really so conscious about it. Like every time that I'm overthinking, I automatically just get myself out of it. You know, like whether it's looking for a guess you know, especially with that, I have a problem actually reaching out to a guest to to get on the podcast. Some of them, some of them come very easily. Like so far, most of them that have been on the podcast, they come easily because I think about them and I just do it. But I have so many other guests. Literally, I can actually name a number, like almost hundred people that I idea that I even have on my notes that I overthink: should I have them or should I not have them? That's because I'm constantly overthinking all the scenario of how the conversation is going to go instead of just having them. So trust me, I'm on the road to actually getting that out of my mind to make sure that I don't overthink anymore. I just do because because after, after I overthink, there are like some people that I've done, um, like I've talked to on the podcast. And as soon as I talk to them after overthinking it for like three weeks on if I should talk to them or not, I feel so good. Like I'm like relieved, you know, like I feel like, wow, that was so easy. All I had to do was just text them. And then as soon as I text them, they say yes, because I'm not actually thinking about rejection because I got rejected. So many people tell me they don't want to be on the podcast, but the people who have been, it's like, I'm like, I'm, sometimes I'm so sure that they're going to say yes, because I even overthink the message I'm going to send to them. That message might take me even sometimes two days to, to, to think about how I'm going to say, because I want to tell them something good. It's just me, but it's all about, you know, just trying to get that out of myself, you know, because I think it's also not healthy. And if you have that and that's happening to you, you have to just be very conscious about it and just know how to check yourself out of it. You know, now, obviously, like I talked about my 87 fans, <laughs> it's actually a good number, 87, you know, I don't have the stats here in front of me right now, but I do know that it's 87 fans who have been listening to the podcast every episode, you know, like these are the ones, because I guess now every year you get like a wrapped of like Spotify and YouTube and, and all these other streaming platforms that tell you like who've been listening, how they've been listening, you know, like your audience, your like analytics and all those things. And I kind of, you know, have like 87, between 87 to hundred people who are tuning in every episode. And I actually love that, you know, because I think even if it stopped there, it would be good. I think 100 is a good amount because think about it. 100 people is a lot of people. But, you know, we're living in a generation now where you think like you need to get 100,000 views. You need to get a million views. I feel like there's no connection. I feel like with this 100 people that I have or with this 87 people that are listening to me, 
I know they're going to be there. I know they're going to listen. You know, I feel like I'm talking to you very closely. But with million, two million, three million, fifty million people, it's insane. Like if I was sitting in a per, in a place where there's like fifty million listening to me, and I'm like, "Do you guys listen to the podcast?" They're like, "Yeah," with a very loud. I don't even know where you can even fit fifty million people in one place. It's insane. It's a lot. But hundred people in one room, and I'm like, "You all listen to podcasts?" Yeah. Pretty cool, pretty calm. I feel like there's just no pressure. You know what I mean? But once you get there to that, to the millions, to the hundreds of thousands of listeners, you're just like, whoa. Obviously, you got to up your game, right? And don't forget, you mess up. You don't post. They, they're they going to be checking. They're going to be watching, seeing, have you been posting or not? Have you been, what have you been doing differently? Do you have, like, you know, there's just a lot. I feel like you end up just owing your life to people constantly on and on and on. You have to be consistent with that. And I don't think, you never know, maybe I'll get to, to do that because I enjoy to do this. So why not? But it's just an insane thing to just have. You almost feel like you're just slave to that content all the time. You have to just get the best, the best, the best, the best, the best, the best. There's no room for failure. And I know that's how life is supposed to be, but you know, once you fail, which we normally do, unless you got those 87 fans who are loyal, I don't know what else you're going to do. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just chatting shit, but, but I really appreciate that, you know, and I'm, I'm really proud and I'm actually going to celebrate this end of the year. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to celebrate this 25th, 25 episodes to this bonus episode, I'm going to do something, whether it's go to dinner with my wife and, and, you know, just enjoy it. You know, I got a new logo. Maybe in the future, we're going to do some merch. I don't know, whatever it is. I'm just enjoying it. I think I just got a new hat. I wear it on my last episode. It just says on the logo. It's not, it's not like I'm selling it. It's just my hat. It's just one hat, but it's just, I wanted to do that just to feel like you know, this is it. I'm going to end this year by just having something that is going to represent that, you know what, this podcast is real. It's going to, it's going to continue. Because there's one thing I actually forgot saying that the times when I was having the anxiety attack, I had a conversation with my wife and I was like, I think after this end of the year or 25th episode, I was going to do like a season one, like ending, and I'm going to take a break. We had this conversation. I was like, yeah. And she was like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. You know, you can do season one and after you do season two, which means what I'll plan like another, how many episodes before I come back for season two? I was like, fuck no. I mean, I didn't tell that to my wife, but I just thought about it. I was like, fuck no. You're not doing season one and season two and season three. You're keep going. I don't care how much I'm going to be not even being able to be consistent, but I'm not stopping. Not stopping. No. Why? For what? Because sometimes the universe, there's just something when you're doing something good, it just wants you to fail. It wants you to stop. And as I think about it, and look, it, it might be a good plan. It might be a good idea that I had that thing. But I feel like it was just the bitch in me. It's telling me do season one. And then do season two and season three. Like, take a pause, take a break. You deserve it. Trust me, I do. Because I work hard. But, you know, I'm going to rest when I die. Inshallah. I hope so. If uh, Allah grants me Jannah, inshallah. But yeah, so I'm just going to answer some few questions. And then I think we're going to call this episode off. Now... I actually wrote on Instagram and say, who here have any questions for me? <laughs> I'm working on a solo episode and nobody answered me. Come on, 87 fans. What, what are you guys doing? I thought you guys were loyal to me. But someone sent four questions and guess who it is? My number one fan, my wife. And the first one is, how do you come up with guests? I don't know, honestly, like, as I say before, I just look into people who somehow have just a very interesting journey, you know, 
It could be anybody. I just sometimes just go around the internet. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm just searching and searching and searching. I research about a person. If I find you interesting, if I find something, then I just reach out. Some people come up, come more easily. Some people take more time for me to decide. And that's just a lot about the overthinking. But overall, like I just, it's like almost a like it's just like a feeling like it's just a sense that comes like like for example the g podcast i was at work holding a jackhammer thousand and i was about to drill and i don't know for some reason g came into my mind i don't know where i thought about him before but it didn't really clicked and then as soon as i thought about it the second time and i remember that week i was like i'm doing ms episode i did a video with emma episode with emma and then i was like i need another person to do it on that week and then g came to my mind and i was like I text him. immediately. I text him. I didn't even think about it. I just text him immediately. And then I did my research later on him because it was just like, it felt like it was just easy. You know what I mean? And it was actually my most view episode, like 10,000 views. And I really thank you guys for that. Even though after that episode, there was like a lot of shit that happened because G and Jizzle somehow started going at it in Twitter and everybody's like, you need to, now you need to interview Jizzle. And I'm like, no, what am I going to ask him? What am I going to ask Jizzle? Like, does he own a home? No. Like, I would, of course, I'll be interested in to talk to him face to face and just have a conversation. Like, because I think he's a fascinating artist. He's a great guy. And I don't know him personally, but I love his music. He's actually like my favorite artist in Gambia. You know, like there are new cats that are coming in right now, but I love Jizzle. I love it. I love his music. I think it's, it's the best for the last decade. You know, so it's amazing. But, you know, I'll love to talk to him and just get to know who, who he is. And I think he's, his story is actually like inspiring. But I like a person who will come and actually do have, be able to have a dialogue. We can have a very free conversation because, you know, the podcast, I don't really like asking questions and questions. I like it to be very natural. I like it to just be, we just talk, even if we just meet, you know, but sometimes it can be stiff sometimes with some people and all that, but it is what it is. But overall, like, I just want to thank G also, because this was, it was a really an amazing episode and like, like it really boom, it really went places. You know what I mean? And the second question is, who is your dream guest? My dream guest. Wow. I'm not even going to hesitate. Number one, just number one, Joe Rogan, because he is the reason why I started this podcast also. He I only listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. I listen to the other ones, but I listen every episode that he drops. I listen. I actually go to sleep listening to his podcast. I had fight with my wife because me listening to podcasts night when I'm going to sleep. It just has to play on the background. So I just love everything about the guy. He's an amazing guy. You know, even sometimes I, I don't agree with everything he says, but I just like listening to him, you know, he's so open-minded and I think I'm a little bit like that, you know, and hopefully soon I'll start my jiu-jitsu classes and my martial art classes and then I can fully be like Joe Rogan. But yeah, Joe Rogan will be my number one guest to have and I would love to be on a show one day, you never know. That's actually a dream of mine because I have a lot of things I need to talk about with him, with the aliens and the pyramids and everything. I have my own theories also. So yeah. The third one is, which is, which episode is your favorite so far? Hmm. I know my wife is the one asking this question, so I don't know whether I have to say her episodes were good. I'll say her, for number one, her episode. <laughs> yeah, but I always love talking to my wife. But I'll say, when it comes to the podcast, because what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to achieve the type of, type of conversation I'm trying to have. It was very rare. I didn't get that type of conversation in all the episodes. I'll say I have almost two or three that I really enjoy, you know? And the funny thing is the Saini one is actually the best podcast. The, like the, the most shared episode, the Saini Dabo one with my nephew. I would say number three would be the Jibril and my other nephew. Because it was a very natural, we didn't plan it. That episode was actually supposed to be a test episode. 
it was not meant to be a full episode. Like we were actually be like, okay, let's just do a test. And the test started and we just kept recording. And then we recorded almost three hours, but we actually cut it to one hour. Like seriously, because it was a lot of back and forth. Light went off, electricity went off. You know, there was a kid like Jibby who lives in our house, another Jibby and was like, Cash Power is finished some some shit. Like there's a lot of shit that happened on the episode. And it was really nice because I love when natural thing happens when I'm recording an episode. I just like things to happen and I can just adapt to the situation. And I'll say number three was actually, it's hard to say which one. Sorry, number two, I mean, is either the Mauda one or the Momodu Mambure one. I don't know which one. I haven't really decided. But, I, but both of those episodes were amazing. Like the Mauda one is because he made it so easy for me. I was so nervous because I think he was a guest that I was really nervous about because I felt like he's so well-spoken, he's such a great talker and he's a very smart young guy. And it was just, it's just amazing. And I was like, I don't know how to even talk to him. I can't keep up. But I managed to control the episode and he also just went with the flow. We talked about football. We talked about Saudi because, you know, like it was just a very chill episode, but also a very, you know, like thought provoking. We talked about a lot of important stuff, you know, it was really cool. And the, the Momodu Mambure one, my cousin, is because I've always thought about going to where he, what he's doing. I want to be there with him and do that ayahuasca thing, because I want to just learn a lot about my childhood and just see certain things, which I will hope to see. I don't know what I'm going to see, but I think that episode just meant a lot to me. It was in my best moment because I feel like I, like if we talk again, I would be a better talker because I was just a little bit um, stuttery with my words and, and everything. Certain questions he asked me, I wasn't really prepared, even though I answered them, but wanted to answer them with more confidence, you know, with more proper. And because he's, he's an amazing talker. Like I've been around my, more and more more can talk for hours and he will just teach you things that you will never think about. Like it's, he's an amazing guy. So yeah, that episode was very, very touching because after that I was like, I'm still thinking to go or not. Just two weeks ago, I was like, I really want to go there. I really want to go do this. I need to go do this. But a part of me is like, I don't want to do that. I'm going to, you know, leave everything to God. Tawakkal to Allah and I'll figure out my way. So, yeah, I think those three episodes, the Maudu one and the Maudo and the Jibril was really good episodes. I really enjoyed those episodes. Now, what's the hardest thing to do with the podcast? The hardest thing, everything. The hard, everything. Audio problems, video problems, as you can see, I'm recording this. I don't even know whether it's recording or not. Hopefully it's recording, but I got this webcam right here recording <laughs> so I don't know but it's gonna be interesting um but yeah like I never thought that I would have internet issues in Gambia while I'm not living in Gambia I don't know whether that makes sense I am not in Gambia but I never thought that I'll be having internet problems while I'm abroad so whoever Company, Afrisel, Gamsel, Comium, whoever, that is QCell, fix your, fix, whichever company that is dealing with Wi-Fi, we need to fix that because it's kind of embarrassing and it's really annoying because I'm really trying to create this app, this podcast, not only for me, but for Gambians. I want Gambians to have a podcast, you know, and I'm abroad. I can't be home all the time and I want to talk to people there. There's so many important and interesting people I want to talk to and just because and even now from now on from the 25th episode I've decided that I'm not even going to have any guests in Gambia like Gambia and who are in Gambia because of just the episode problem there's some episodes that I've sh that I've recorded that just went to my recycle bin there are episodes I recorded 30 minutes in and the internet just died so it's just like, it's kind of annoying and it's like, it wastes a lot of time. So it's, that makes it really hard to kind of, you know, yeah, to, to record the podcast. And also just the difficulty, just getting guests that are, can sit in front of me. 
you know, I'm having difficulty with that. But I think that's just a lot of things that come with overcoming my fears and just facing it, you know. And another thing I think is just getting people, not getting people, I think dealing with people's opinions. So I come from a very respected family and every a lot of people know me and all that. So what I say, how I say, like I'm, I'm sure in this episode, I'm going to get some shit about it with all the cuss words that I've said and all these things. And uh, it just comes out, you know, and it's just me, right? And I'm sure I will get like, don't talk like that. Don't, you know, like there's a lot of, it's like, there's a lot of eyes on me. Everybody's watching me. Everybody's watching what I'm doing. And I'm just, I'm personally having a lot of difficult time doing the podcast. I don't know whether Emma was asking me about this podcast or just podcast overall, but I'll just say in my own podcast, you know, I think about a lot about what people are going to think you know, I'm still dealing with that. And it's kind of annoying that I have to do that. I'm trying. There are some episodes, even my mom tell me I even have to like edit again and do again, even though I haven't done them yet. But, you know, like I have to deal with that, you know, so and I appreciate her for advising me. And I understand why she's telling me I'm not saying that she's wrong and I'm right. I, I'm actually the wrong one here because I shouldn't be talking like this. But I think everything just takes time. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. And you know, I'm learning a lot about myself, how I talk and how I communicate and all that. Or sh- people might hear the ep- some of the things that I say or how I say it and they maybe they wouldn't want to come on the podcast, but it's just me. This is just me because I really want this podcast to be about me, the authentic me, not creating a version of me or hiding a certain side of me. And I know sometimes people don't like to see the fully you because they want you to keep something in you like and I do that I have sutra which we call sutra and certain things I'm private I keep it to myself you know I don't really need to show everybody or tell anybody about it so it's just you know but I still want to do this podcast with you know me being authentic to myself with being authentic to the to everybody who's listening so I think that's all I have for this episode today. I just want to say thank you for listening. And if you enjoy listening to my podcast, please share it. Share it. Go to my YouTube, subscribe, go to my Spotify, and make sure you download the episodes. I really appreciate you. And I hope you guys learned something from this episode today. I apologize if nothing was very clear, but this was just a very fun bonus episode to just talk about a recap of everything that just happened this year. And hopefully we'll keep doing these, you know, I kind of enjoy this actually. I'm sitting in my kitchen right now. It's everything is kind of dark and it's kind of, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cozy. Um, yeah. So appreciate you. And if you want to hear more, stay listening. Thank you. Peace out.